when this phenomenon of mutilation started uh, back in the late 60s, I know that there were people who, in the beginning, they took it seriously, even though the rest of the world was saying it might be predator and satanic cult. Um, I guess I find myself in uh, that unusual and unique position of also being one of those people who took the mutilation seriously enough to stick with it long enough that uh, I have found myself becoming uh, an authority <laughs> in an area that I never would have suspected the mutilation of animals worldwide. But the carcasses themselves are one of the biggest single bodies of evidence that something highly unusual is taking place on this planet. Mutilations have continued every year in my files. Oh, I first uh, started looking into the mystery in 79 to 80 when I did the documentary A Strange Harvest. And the phenomenon was worldwide then. It uh, remained worldwide in stories throughout the beginning of the 80s. In, we're now 1990. And right here in front of me, I have an article from Associated Press. Cattle mutilations still unexplained. This is dated August 19th, 1990, Vicksburg Sunday Post, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Here is a story about two mutilations in a little teeny place in Mississippi called Guntown. This is 1990, this is right now. One of them, and I talk with the veterinarian, a veterinarian named McMillan in Guntown. Quote, a 500 pound heifer was found in early July with the left ear and 18 inches of skin from its left rib cage clear, cleanly severed. Where the hide had been, a hole was bored through to the beast's heart. And the vet said that he could look right down through a hole in the rib cage and he could see a hole going through the heart. Do we have any technology that could do that kind of a... Maybe lasers. But the big question is, which contingency of the human community is going to be bothering with a calf in Guntown, Mississippi uh, with laser equipment that could do this? Current day lasers, if the military has it, fine. But this phenomenon started in 1967 